Hi, in this video, we're going to do an example where we are paying off a loan, but we don't know how many payments we have to pay off the loan. So uh, let's look at, look at the example. We got a 5% annual effective interest rate uh, on a loan that's being repaid with level annual payments at the end of each year for two end years. The amount of principal repaid in the nth payment is 171. The balance immediately after the next to last payment is 476, and we're asked to calculate the amount borrowed. So this is a problem that I have found that students struggle with, but I, I hope that I can show you uh, how to think about the problem that once you see another one like this, that uh, you'll be able to, to do it. Okay, so let's first uh, pluck out some information that's given to us here. Uh, I've got uh, in the second sentence, the amount of principal repaid in the nth payment is 171. So that's telling me symbolically that cap P sub N is 171. And I'm asked to calculate the amount, of, uh, the amount borrowed. That's the loan amount. And so I've got this one principal uh, repaid amount. Uh, 171, this one cap P value, and I'm looking for cap L, the amount borrowed. So I'm automatically thinking to myself that I could, if I could get all of the other cap P values, then L would just be the sum of all of those. And and notice I kind of uh, almost slid it by here <laughs> that there are not N payments in this problem, but actually two N payments. Uh, there's an annual payments for two in year, so there's two in payments. So that's why um, the index ranges, uh, the index on that summation ranges from one up to two in. Okay, so that's what I'm thinking to myself is I could add up the uh, principal repaid amounts, all of them, to get what the loan amount would be. The other thing about this problem is it says it's being repaid with level annual payments, and I know when I have level annual payments that the the cap p values form a geometric progression so that's good and in fact uh when i sum up all of those cap p values it would be the same i get i'm going to get the same answer as if i take the first cap p value cap p sub one and multiply that times an s angle uh two n because there's two n payments here and so those are the two equations that i'm kind of trying to focus on here i've got the cap p sub n value and uh, I've got, uh, and I know that the loan amount, which is what I'm looking for, the amount borrowed, is a cap P1 times an S angle 2N. So let's look at the other information that I'm given to given here. The next to last sentence says the balance immediately after the next to last payment is 476. Well, the last payment would be uh, 2N, the payment number 2N. So the next to last payment would be a 2N minus 1. So symbolically, I got a cap B sub 2N minus 1 is equal to a 476. And of course, after the last payment, that's after the 2Nth payment, uh, the balance is going to be 0. So cap B sub 2N is going to be 0. So that's going to tell me, I mean, right away, I could, I could, I could get that the amount of principal that's being repaid in the last payment is that 476. So cap P sub 2N is 476. Um, now, if you don't recognize that immediately, well, you should, you should be able to recognize that immediately. But basically what I'm saying is that you, you've got neighboring balances, balances at neighboring ages. And so you take the, the earlier balance and you subtract the later balance, and that's going to give you the amount of principal that's going to be repaid in that, in that payment. Uh, so that's, that's what I did here. Is I, that's how I got the, uh, the, the payment, uh, the amount of principal that's repaid in that last payment is that $476 there. And so now look, I've got the, the, the cap P sub N value, and I've got the cap P sub 2N value. And so I can relate those because I've got level payments. I can relate them, and, and they're in periods between, um, in years between uh, time N and time 2N. So cap P sub 2N would be cap P sub N times a 1 plus I to the N. Substitute in the 476 for cap P sub 2N and the 171 for cap P sub N and I is 5%. I've got this equation I can solve for N. Uh, N is 21. Now look, if I go through this on the calculator, I invite you to go through and solve that equation for n, and you're not going to get exactly 21. In fact, I, on my calculator, I got 20.982800084, and if my calculator kept going, the digits would keep going. You're, you're not going to get exactly that. But you recognize that if you look at what n is, n is, n is going to be a whole number. And so this is just round off error. I'm going to recognize that as round off error. And that's why I said a little while ago that uh, N is, is just 21.
Okay, so I'm going to use a 21 for n. If you don't want to use a 20, if you use that use that 20.9828 number and store that as your n and just continue using that throughout the rest of the problem, you're going to get um, we're not going to get different answer choices. We're not you're not our answer choices are not, are going to be different because of some round off error, but they're not going to be so different that it's going to put us in a in a wrong answer choice. So I'm going to choose just to use a 21. Recognize that as, oh, that, that's an n equals to a 21. I'll give you a little, um, uh, I'll give you a little uh, insider information on those of us who write problems. When I wrote this problem, I knew that I wanted n to be 21. So I make, you know, I, I come up with this number 171 for the cap p sub n value. And then what does the cap p sub 2n have to be? Well, it's not exactly 476. It would have to be 476 point such and such and such and such. Well, I don't want to write that in the problem. So I just say, okay, well, I'll just use a 476 as the cap p sub 2n. And it, it, it shifts the round off error to being with the n with the amount n instead of the amount cap p sub 2 n. But I meant for it to be a, a 21. And I think exam writers, those of us who are writing exams, uh, that's, that's typical of what we do. Okay, so now look, I've got the, I've got the n value of 21. And so that cap p sub n being 171, that's, that's when n is 21. And so uh, I've got uh, uh, the cap p sub 21 value. I'm trying to get this L uh, L, I need the cat P1 value. So I want to relate the cat P21 to the cat P1 value. And I notice, well, then there's 20 periods between time 1 and time 21, 20 years in this case. So cat P21 would be cat P1 times 1 plus i to the 20th. Plug in the numeric values for everything. Solve for cat P1, and you'll get uh, cat P1 is 64.45. So now I've got everything that I need to calculate what that cap L value is. Uh, cap L now is the cap P1, 64.45, times an S angle 2N is an S angle 42 at, at that 5% annual effective interest rate, and I get 87.15. So that's my answer. My answer is 87.15. I think that's how I could do, uh, that's how I would suggest that, 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 that's how I would do the problem. Now, I want to show you another way to do the problem because there's all kinds of correct ways to do these problems. So let's 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 get start over and, and or not completely over, but let's look at a, a different approach to the problem. So I did this problem by looking at um, uh, cat p values and trying to uh, look at relationships between the cat p values and knowing that the cap l value is going to be cat p1 times an s angle 2n. But we could have looked at balances. So let me go back and, and, and redo this problem looking at balances, focusing on the balances at different times. So for instance, the balance at time 2n minus 1 and the balance at time 2n, I already know that. We've already talked about that. And from these two, I did. Uh, we, got, we got earlier that we could just state then that the amount of principal that's being repaid in the 2nth payment is that 476. But there's other ways to relate balances at, diff at neighboring time periods. And, and another way is that the balance at time 2n is the balance immediately before that accumulated and then subtract the entire payment amount. So, so let's plug in some the numeric values for everything here. So I get a zero on the left-hand side of the equal sign equals the 476 times 1.05 minus the, uh, the amount of the payment. So I get, I get from, the, from the, the neighboring balances, I get the payment amount must be 499.8. And so then the previous sentence in the, in the problem had to do with the amount of principal that's repaid, the cap P sub N value being 171. Now I know what the total payment was also. And so when I subtract the amount of principal that's being repaid, I'll get the amount of interest that I'm paying at time N, and that number ends up being the 328.8. But how would you, you know, another way to think about the amount of interest at time n is that it's the balance at time n minus 1 times the interest rate. So I've got the numbers here except for the balance at time n minus 1. Uh, the balance at time n minus 1 would be this cap i sub n, the 328.8 divided by the interest rate of 0 0.05, and that number is 6576. So look at what I've got now. I've got the balance at time n minus 1 and a balance at time 2n minus 1. 
And notice that there are n periods between those two time periods. So I could think of the earlier balance as the present value, the later balance as the future value, and I could uh, uh, um, uh, form a relationship between those balances this way, that the balance at time n minus 1 is equal to what's on the right-hand side is, is uh, the, the present value of all the payments from time n to, n to time from time n minus 1 to time 2n minus 1, that's n periods, and then plus the balance at time 2n minus 1 uh, discounted by. So this is the same, uh, the, the same uh, uh, idea that we've been using before, that take the balance at the earlier point in time, it's the present value, the balance at the later point in time is the future value. And now plug in the numeric values for everything, and the only thing that's missing here is the n value. Uh, the balance at time n minus 1 is the 6576. The, the, the payment is 499.8, and the balance at time 2n minus 1 was the 476. This is a one-step calculation on your, on your calculator. Put in those values, compute n. Notice I'm putting in, I would put in a negative 499.8 as the payment and a negative 476 then as the uh, future value and then the positive 6576 as the present value, five as i slash y, compute n, and you're gonna get uh, 21. And uh, again, you might not get exactly 21, but I'm thinking of n as being 21. And then what's the amount borrowed? It's the present value of all the payments then. The payments are all 499.8. Each one of them are 499.8. And now n is 21, that tells me I got 42 payments. And so 499.8 times an A angle 42, uh, present value of all those payments times an A angle 42 at 5% gives me an 8708. Now that's not exactly what I got before. If you look back, or I'll, I'll show you before, I got actually an 8715. So if you would have done it this way, this approach, and I would have taken the first approach, we would have been off by what, $7, but I, I can assure you that that's not gonna put you in a different answer choice uh, on, on the exam. They're not going to have answer choices that are so close together that, uh, you know, the round off error on this type of problem is going to put you in a different answer choice. That's just not going to happen. Okay, so those are a couple of different ways to do this problem. I think both of them are pretty natural. Uh, I, 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 think, I think both of them are natural. I don't think one way is any better than the other. Um, so you can choose which way is more natural to you. All right, well, I will see you in the next video.